Welcome into Chicago Bears Now. I'm your host, Harrison Graham. Appreciate everybody for clicking on today's video. Coming up on today's show, busy show, by the way, Traylon Burks visited Hallis Hall on Monday. Could the Bears draft him at pick 39 if he falls or perhaps trade up for him? We'll explore that discussion in a moment. Also, speaking of receivers, could the Bears trade for a superstar wide receiver? A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel, Terry McLaurin all opting to not participate in off-season workouts as they want new contracts. Could Ryan Poles dip his toes into the water and bring in a big fish? And then lastly, Tevin Jenkins, is he moving back to right tackle? Uh, minicamp got underway at Hallis Hall today. We'll talk about that as well. All that and more coming up here on Bears Now. But before we jump into it, get subscribed to the channel. It's youtube.com slash Bears Now. We'll continue to have you guys covered all offseason long with the latest news, rumors, top analysis, opinions, and much more content coming your way as well. YouTube.com slash Bears Now. Justin Fields, let's start there. He actually met with the media, held a press conference today because the Bears have a mini camp uh, that is underway starting today. Uh, here were some notable takeaways I uh, found uh, from this press conference. Number one, he understands this is his team. He sounds like a leader to me. I think he's more comfortable. Last year was awkward when, you know, they promised Andy Dalton would start, and then, you know, Fields was in and out of the lineup. The whole naggy debacle, that was awkward. Uh, also, a, a couple of things I found interesting. He's working on his fundamentals with Luke Getze. Uh, there were reports that he's trying to, uh, you know, shorten his uh, his throwing motion, but also what he spoke to directly today was working on his drop, you know, his threes, his five-step drop, seven, all that stuff, fundamentals, footwork, all that. Been training with Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. He confirmed that, uh, that they spent some time in the offseason together down in Georgia. He's also excited for who the Bears draft, even called Chris Olave my guy. Now we'll see if that means anything, but, uh, you know, uh, I don't think they're going to get him, but I think he's more saying, hey, I love the guy. Uh, yeah, I'd love to play with him too. Uh, and then he also mentioned this. I don't think he got much out of Matt, Matt Nagy. He didn't say so specifically, but he was asked, uh, did Matt Nagy put you in a good spot to succeed last year? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he also said that uh, him and Luke Getze have not studied much of his film at all from last year. They're flushing the Nagy tape. I think that's very, very clear. They're moving on to 2022. Thanks, Nagy. Hashtag thanks, Nagy. Get it flowing in the comments. Uh like I said, three-day minicamp starting today. So Fields and the boys are out there getting some work in uh, out on the practice field, which is uh, which is exciting. First time we've seen that uh, with this new regime. They've been having you know weightlifting sessions the last couple of weeks and classroom work, uh, but kind of the first time we'll get to see these guys you know run around a little bit and uh, you know get acclimated on the field. Who's excited to see this new Bears offense? Because I know I am. I'm fired up to see what Justin Fields can do here in 2022. Type me down below if you are excited to see the offense in 2022. I think it's going to be interesting to see what Luke Getze cooks up for Justin Fields. All right, let's get to those rumors that we teased a little bit ago. Will the Bears draft Traylon Burks? I'm going to elevate this to two smoking Jays. I think it's at least a decent-ish possibility. The fact that they brought him in on a visit to Hallis Hall, I think speaks at least a decent amount to the interest level, right? Visited Hallis Hall on Monday, according to reports. He's expected to go round one, but there's been some rumors, some chatter that he could dip out of the first round and fall to the second round. I think you know, it's at least possible, right? Everyone can't go the first round. Every receiver, you know, it can't be 10 receivers that go in the first round. Somebody's going to dip. Maybe it's Traylon Burks who didn't, you know, test super well because we get obsessed with all these testing metrics, which I'm not saying they're not important, but I turn on the tape and this guy's running away from Alabama cornerbacks. That's all I need to know. I also know that uh, this would be a steal at 39. I don't think he'll fall to 39, but like I said, weirder things have happened. Just look at this offseason. It's been a bizarre offseason in the National Football League. Uh, if Traylon Burks is available, I think this would be a home run selection for Chicago. Uh, dynamic weapon that can play outside. He can be a big slot. You can line him up in the backfield from time to time. Physical. He runs away from defenders, too. Now, he doesn't look blazing fast, but he's so big and powerful, and he gets that acceleration going. Uh, I saw someone compared to Derrick Henry, who ran a 4.54 in the 40, and Traylon Burks ran a 4.55. Derrick Henry on tape runs away from defenders, both in college and in the NFL. So does Traylon Burks. Why are we getting obsessed with Burks' 40-yard dash? I've seen him play live 
plenty of times. He is absolutely electric in the open field. And let's be honest, the Bears need more weapons as we continue to discuss over the last several months. Darnell Mooney, good player, nice piece. I think he's a guy uh, to work with moving forward. I like the addition of Byron Pringle, but if you could get a guy like Burks in here to be your number one, number one A, one B at least, next to Mooney, Pringle's your number three, everybody slides back a spot. I think that makes this offense really, really fun and really, really exciting. And I think this is the type of prospect that Luke Getze uh, would have a blast with. You know, that Kyle Shanahan influence offense where you can utilize guys in different ways, maximize their strengths. I think he would fit in Chicago really, really well with what they're trying to do moving forward. Now you look at the Bears draft picks. Obviously, uh, if you think you may have to trade up for Traylon Burks late into the first round or early round two, say, you know, Burks doesn't get drafted round one. Maybe you're thinking if you're Ryan Poles, okay, maybe I need to get up to 33, 34, uh, you know, on the second round. Uh, you know, you could do that, but you only have six picks in total. So you would have to weigh, you know, cost value, right? Like, do you want to uh, ship out one of your extra picks when you already don't have that many. Is Traylon Burks worth trading up for for the Bears? Type Y for yes, type in for no. Would you trade up for the Arkansas wide receiver if you were Ryan Poles? Get your votes in, Y for yes, or you can type in for no. Lots of wide receiver discussion today. Could the Bears trade for a superstar wide receiver? I'll go one smoking J. It's not completely fake news. It's barely true. It could happen, uh, but I do think it's unlikely. Uh, ESPN's Adam Schefter uh, reported this yesterday, and this kind of sparked the trade rumors around Debo Samuel, A.J. Brown, and Terry McLaurin. As Schefter says that they are all not going to participate in their team's on-field offseason programs because they want new contracts at this time in the offseason where – Obviously, wide receivers have been getting uh, – explode. The, the market has exploded, he says, which obviously is true. Uh, Schefter also added this when it comes to Terry McLaurin. He said McLaurin is going to attend Washington's offseason program, but he won't uh, actually, you know, do the on-field stuff as he continues to work through contracts. And that's what this is about. These guys are entering a contract year, and they want that financial security, especially with – how much the wide receiver market has exploded this offseason. Now, a lot of this focus turned on A.J. Brown because he sent out a couple of cryptic tweets. Quote, I'm a diva and a bad teammate all of a sudden. LOL, okay, do what you have to do then, and so will I. And then he said this, they switch up quick. Now, is he talking about the Titans fan base? Is he talking about the management Who's he talking about? If he's talking about the fan base, it's like, well, we know that. Every fan base has toxic fans. You know, they DM and tweet at players, you know, you effing suck. You know, uh, you already make a ton of money. Just show up and be a pr good teammate, blah, blah, blah. But if he's talking about front office management, like, he, you know, they're not willing to pay him right now, that could lead to potentially a trade happening. I, you know, that at least becomes a possibility. Now, ESPN's Diana Rossini says the two sides are working on a deal, but until a deal happens for these guys, I think it's at least a chance that some of them could get dealt. We'll talk about this a little bit further in just a moment, but I want to take this time to tell you guys to follow us on Rumble as we are live both on YouTube and on Rumble. I encourage you guys to follow us over there if you haven't already because, A, it helps support the show, and, B, you can catch other content creators over there, more sports, news, politics, tech, and business content that you can find. It's free and uncensored, by the way. Uh, bonus Bears videos from time to time as well. If you want to see more of me, follow us on Rumble, rumble.com slash Bears. Now, that is the place to do it. And a cool feature of their app, if you're listening on your phone, you can actually uh, have it playing in the background. Like, you could listen to this video right now, minimize the app, and, you know, text your buddy. It's not going to pause like it would on YouTube. Rumble.com slash Bears. Now, uh, cool uh, platform that we're publishing our videos on. Okay, let's get back to these star receivers. You kind of compare them one by one by one. A.J. Brown, these, this is all through three seasons, by the way, 185 uh, receptions, almost 3,000 yards, 24 touchdowns. He certainly led the way in that department in touchdowns. Uh, Debo Samuel, who's missed the most time with injuries, still has 167 for 2,600 yards and 10 touchdowns, but you factor in the rushing component he brings. He rushed for, I believe, eight touchdowns this year. And then Terry McLaurin, who quietly is just kind of an assassin, man. 222 catches, over 3,000 yards, and 16 touchdowns. He is an absolutely fantastic route runner. Uh, he sneakily might be the best pure receiver on this list. I love all three of them. They all do a little bit of different stuff, but let's be honest. The lack of a first-round pick 
Makes the trade difficult, right? You could trade a future pick. You could trade both seconds and maybe your third if you really are desperate. Maybe you could throw Robert Quinn at one of these teams. But uh, in reality, there's going to be teams that offer a first-round pick for these players, and the Bears can't do that unless they want to trade their first-round pick next year, which I don't think Ryan Poles is in the business of wanting to do that at this time. But you're in charge, and you're saying, hey, you know what? I just want a star receiver with Justin Fields. Pick one to trade for. Type AB for AJ Brown, type DS for Debo Samuel, or you can type TM for Terry McLaurin. All I know is all three of these dudes are studs, and they would all make the Bears better. All right, to next up on the show, Tevin Jenkins. Could he play right tackle? That is three smoking Jays. I think there's a pretty good chance that he's going to end up being back on the right side of the offensive line because on the first day of minicamp, voluntary minicamp, that's where he was. They flipped Larry Borum and Tevin Jenkins. Larry Borum was playing left tackle. Tevin Jenkins was playing right tackle. Adam Hogue tweeted this out. Credit him, but uh, this was all coming out from all the reports from Hallis Hall. Matt Eberflus made it clear that's a fluid situation and that they're going to use different combinations. And I'm sure that's true. Maybe we'll see Jenkins at left some uh, and then Borum at right. But I think it's pretty telling that on the first day we see these players on the field, they flip Jenkins back to right tackle. I think that's where he stays, and I think he'll end up being a starter at that position. That's where he played primarily out of college. Remember, we were pretty surprised when the Bears drafted him how soon they uh, Nagy and the last regime said, yeah, he's a left tackle. It's like interesting because he played primarily right tackle at Oklahoma State and was really good at it. Why mess with that? Well, that's the, the Nagy regime for you guys. Doesn't mean he can't play left, but this is kind of where the depth chart sits now. Devin Jenkins at right, Borum at left. Uh... We still don't know who's going to start at right guard. Lucas Patrick was at center. Cody Whitehair at left guard. Now, a report also came out uh, from Hal Saul that uh, Dakota Dozier and Sam Mustafer split time at right guard. Maybe Mustafer becomes your backup center and uh, right guard. Maybe just your swing interior lineman there. Uh, Dozier, I guess as of now, would probably start at right guard, but I continue to leave that with a question mark because I think the Bears have to bring at least one more starting offensive lineman in, whether it's through the draft or in NFL free agency. So I want to know, and we'll obviously explore this a lot further, where should Tevin Jenkins play? Type LT for left tackle, type RT for right tackle. I think right tackle is his more natural position, and I think that's where he's going to end up playing for the Bears. Let us know where you like Tevin Jenkins on this offensive line. All right, that's going to do it for today's Bears Rumors Roundup. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. It's at HGramNFL. Uh, and uh, once I get 3,000 followers, we'll cook up another Instagram Live. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll see you soon here on the channel. Thank you.